TII item 460, March 30th, 2018, iOS 11.3 Goldmaster, iPad 2018. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, Gola! Oh, yeah. My beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand and that I do everything with and has become an extension of who I am. Today's episode is sponsored by Texture. Go right now to texture.com slash TII to get your free trial. This episode is brought to you by Casper. For $100 off your Wave purchase, visit casper.com slash TII100 and use promo code TII100. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and you are listening to the Today in iOS podcast. First up, I want to thank David for sending in the artwork for today's show. David wrote the following. Hi, Rob. I was in Sydney over the last few weeks and got this photo of the Apple Store. The foreground is the light rail system under construction on George Street. I used Adobe Photoshop Express to edit and send this photo. Regards, David. Well, thank you, David, for sending in this. And folks, you can see the artwork in the free TI app via the bonus button for episode 460 or at Instagram.com slash Today in iOS and also at Facebook.com slash Today in iOS. Folks, if you have some artwork and or music that you have created on an iOS device that you would like to share with the audience, please email to me at todayinios at gmail.com. Please make sure to include which app or apps you use to create set artwork and or music. Well, Apple had their special educational event earlier this week in Chicago, and it was a short presentation, just about an hour long, and that is with a two-minute video at the beginning and another two-minute plus video at the end and another 10 minutes of Tim going rah, 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 yada, yada at the beginning, another five minutes of him going rah, 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 yada, yada at the end. Then there was 10 minutes of rah, rah, rah from a couple of guests on stage in the beginning, and it wasn't until really 19 minutes in did Apple actually introduce a new product or really an updated product to be more accurate. Leading up to the event, there were a lot of predictions of all the different products Apple would introduce, and most of them, not even close. What did Apple introduce? The iPad 2018, which is the non-pro version of the iPad 9.7 inch, and pricing is $329 for consumers and $299 for education, and that's the same pricing as before. And it was not the $259 price that had been rumored and which on the last episode I said didn't make a lot of sense. So what is new with the 2018 9.7-inch iPad? To start, it supports the Apple Pencil. So any app for iPad Pros that are designed to work with the Apple Pencil now work with the 2018 9.7-inch iPad, or let's just call it 2018 NPSI iPad. Not to be confused with the TPNI for 12.9 inch or the TPFI for 10.5 inch iPad Pros. Uh, the new 2018 NPSI iPad also has the following features uh, an A10 Fusion chip, not the A10X, an 8 megapixel camera, up to 200 megabits per second LTE, GPS, compass, touch ID, gyroscope, accelerometer, and up to 10 hours of battery life, and it weighs just one pound and is immediately available. Apple claimed that the A10 processor is faster than virtually every Chromebook out there. So that new iPad, the $329 iPad, is faster than virtually every Chromebook out there. Actually, $299 when you consider the education pricing. Apple also just uh, updated the key suite of apps for iPad, Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, or the iWork suite, and they have been updated to support Apple Pencil. So if you have an iPad Pro, make sure to update all three of those key apps, which the new versions are now available, and all three come pre-installed on the new iPad, so no need to update, uh, because they're already there. I am looking forward to trying out Keynote on my iPad Pros with the Apple Pencil to see how they work. To me, Apple Pencil support for Keynote, that was actually probably the best announcement of the event, at least for me. Um, Close second, maybe the smart annotations Apple previewed for pages. I do a lot of contract review, and I have to mark up a lot of crap sent over by lawyers whose only goal is seems to be to ruin our company financially, if given a chance, or any company, it's not just our company. Uh, that seems to be what 
the role of many lawyers are in these contract negotiations. Make sure the other guy will pay you whatever you can get out of them. Um, this will let me really annotate, mark up those docs. And with smart annotations, when you mark something, it stays with what you marked up, even as you add more text before it. So it's not like you're marking in a place in the document. It, it latches onto the text, and as the text moves, the annotation moves, which is kind of cool. There was a rumor of iBook Author being updated for teachers, but it looks like Apple decided to do, actually do something similar to make digital books from pages, right from the iPad. So Pages will get some of the iBook Author features on both the iPad and the Mac version of Pages, which I thought was really nice. Apple then went into some AR yada yada stuff. I would cover what they said about AR, but some of you are probably driving your car, and that coverage would cause drowsiness and or nausea. Well, at least it did for me. Okay, well, I will mention one example of AR that was kind of interesting, and it was about dissecting frogs virtually rather than in the real life. And wow, talk about removing kids from that emotionally scarring moment of the early teen years where they are either traumatized by having to cut open a frog or a pig and overwhelmed with the smells that go with it and just feel horrible for feeling that they somehow are responsible for that animal's death, or they're traumatized because they realize they are not traumatized by this and they should be. Either way, it seems AR would just remove one of the great rites of passage of the early teen years where either the smells of formaldehyde live with you forever or you realize you might be a future Dexter. Next up, Apple introduced Shared iPad. This allows students to pick up any iPad in the school and put in their username and all their docs are there and ready to go. To get all this in place, Apple introduced Apple School Manager. One of the things you can do with Apple School Manager is create Apple IDs for each student quickly and easily. Uh, they said in the presentation that you could create enough for a school of 1,500 students in less than one minute. I'm sure there's a few uh, education IT people pretty happy about that. They also said the free storage for each managed educational Apple ID will increase from five, not enough for anything gigabytes, to 200. Okay, now we can actually do something gigabytes. Apple said there are a bunch of accessories out there for their ecosystem and then highlighted a couple. One was a $99 rugged iPad case and keyboard combo from Logitech, which is not a Bluetooth keyboard, but rather uses a proprietary connector, which means you do not need to charge it as it draws power from the iPad itself. But more importantly, it is a secure solution, making it acceptable for student testing. And Apple also mentioned a $49 crayon from Logitech, a low-cost version of the Apple Pencil. The Logitech crayon uses Apple Pencil Tech to offer up a sub -pick, up for up the sub-pixel accuracy that you get from Apple Pencil, low latency, and tilt support. So like the Apple Pencil, only cheaper and not as pretty. Apple announced that Classroom is now available for the Mac, meaning if you are a teacher with lots of students on iPads, but you normally use your Mac, you can now monitor and help your students via your Mac. In the past, you had to use an iPad. This will be available as a beta for the Mac in June. Apple then introduced a new app called Schoolwork. It is a free cloud-based app that makes it easy to sign handouts and to see each other's students' progress and to interact with other third-party apps. It also... With those third-party apps, it, it allows the teacher to assign basically a specific activity inside a third-party app, like uh, go to Instagram and like the picture of my French Bulldog. And then you can see how each of your students are doing on the assignment that you sent out and make sure that all your students liked your French Bulldog pictures. Well, that's not actually one of the examples they gave. Apple said that while teachers can see each student's progress and activities, only the teacher can do that. Apple does not see it, nor can anyone else. Privacy, privacy, privacy. So I guess that means that the Schoolwork app does not work with Facebook. Actually, it works with apps that hook up to the API that Apple created for Schoolwork. So yeah, Facebook is not one they show work it with. They call the API ClassKit, because of course they do. 
schoolwork will be available in June, which means at WWDC, and my guess would be with the release of iOS 11.4, which is going to be the next major release of iOS. So that's probably, we're going to see a beta of that. Maybe next week we'll see the first beta of 11.4. If not next week, then the week after. Apple then introduced a new, well, let's not call it service. Let's call it rather initiative. And it's called Everyone Can Create. And this is in the tradition of Everyone Can Code. This is focused on creating content, music, video, photography, and drawing. But not podcasting? Huh? Okay, whatever, Apple. I'm not offended. So really... This initiative will help students create content for Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, and Medium. Or is it Mixler, Snapchat, Pinterest, and Tumblr? Well, either way, Apple with Everyone Can Create is giving teachers the tools and guidance to help kids create content for the next generation of social media that is not related to podcasting. Um, thanks, Apple. And that was the event. So really, hardware-wise, it was just the new 2018 NPSI iPad that was announced. All other hardware rumors were a bust. To Google Plus we run, and from Myron Euchre, he has the first piece of feedback, and quote, I just ordered the new iPad 9.7 for myself, cellular, and for my wife, Wi-Fi, because I think it is the better deal right now. The two devices together are about the price of an iPad Pro. The A10 processor on this versus the Pro, which has an A10X, is the same as the iPhone 7, 7 Plus. It looks to be as thick as the iPad Air 1. I wish it was the size of the iPad Air 2 so I could use the same case, but is much cheaper than the iPad Pro. I did look at other specs. The iPad Pro Cellular has a couple of LTE bands that the iPad 2018 does not support. It also has two speakers. The iPad Pro has four speakers. The max memory is storage is 128 gig. The iPad Pro has 256 and 512 gigs available. And the new iPad supports Apple Pencil, but not Apple Keyboard. So you would need to still use a Bluetooth keyboard with it, unquote. And to the email bag we go. Hi, Rob. Quick question about the Apple Pencil. I saw an email today that the Apple Pencil would work with the iPad 2017 edition. Is this true? Regards, MD. Hi, MD. Nope, not true. According to Apple, the Apple Pencil now works with the following iPad models. iPad Pro 12.9 inch second gen. iPad Pro 12.9 inch first gen. iPad Pro 10.5 inch. iPad Pro 9.7 inch. And iPad sixth generation. Last one is the one just announced this week. What I was calling 2018 NPSI iPad, Apple called the iPad 6 Gen. MD replied back with, quote, I wonder if the iPad 6 generation needs to be updated to a certain version, unquote. And nope, MD, it does not. Support for the Apple Pencil is first about the hardware and then about the software. If the hardware does not support it, no amount of software updates will matter. And the iPad 6 Gen, which was released this week, is already running iOS 11.3, and it already supports the Apple Pencil right out of the box. And back to Google Plus and Myron Euchre, who said the following, quote, Today our new iPad 6 Gens arrived. That was quick. As expected, they are the size of the iPad Air. Setup couldn't be easier. I just put my iPad Air 2 next to it, and it did most of the rest. It copied data from the old iPad to the new one, and even offered to back it up first. Now I have two hours to wait for all the apps to download again. I was able to pull the Apple SIM from my iPad Air 2 and put it in my iPad, and LTE works again, unquote. Well, congrats, Myron. Ron Hagland replied to Myron and said, quote, congrats, looks to be a significant upgrade from last year's iPad with a lot of the Pro functionalities, may induce quite a few older iPad owners to finally upgrade, unquote. To which Myron replied, quote, I would have loved the iPad Pro, but two for the price of one is difficult to turn down when you have two that need upgrading, unquote. And and I would agree that this will definitely eat into some of the iPad Pro sales. There are some features, obviously, with the iPad Pro that aren't available in this one, and who knows what the iPad Pros that are going to be announced in September are going to have, 
but you do get the extra speakers, you have the connection for the smart keyboard, and you have a much better resolution. Um, I'll get into that uh, a little bit here uh, on some of the things that are different. But before that, some of the other specs for the 2018 NPSI iPad, it has two gigs of RAM and 2.2 gigahertz A10 processor. It's pretty close in line to the specs for the iPhone 7. It does not have the true tone color matching or promotion. Uh, that's the 120 hertz refresh that the iPad Pros have. Storage is limited to 32 not enough gigabytes and 128 just right gigabytes for the only versions that they have. As I mentioned, it does not support the smart keyboard. It comes in three colors, silver, gold, and space gray. And you can get either Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi plus cellular. It is very similar overall to the iPad Air 2 with the biggest difference, again, being the support of the Apple Pencil and the A10 processor. The new iPad is available already for purchase from your local Apple store and also Best Buy. And you can order online from apple.com for quick delivery with all versions showing the middle of next week for delivery and most for pickup right away. If you want one, uh, you can get one. This could be in your kid's Easter basket come Sunday if, if you want one. Apple also reduced the price of Apple Care Plus for the 2018 NPSI iPad and the iPad Mini to $69 down from $99. The $99 price remains for all the iPad Pros. Thanks once again to Texture, which now means Apple for sponsoring our show. As I said before, Texture is essentially the Netflix of magazines. And how great of a service is this? Well, Apple just purchased Texture. No, I don't mean Tim Cook purchased a subscription. He went well beyond that and purchased the whole company. And Texture is now part of Apple. That is how great Texture is. The Texture app gives you unlimited access to over 200 premium magazines. Texture has leading titles like Time Magazine, The New Yorker, Mac World, Popular Science, and Wired, to name a few. And right now, you can try Texture for free. Strings here, and the Texture app is here to help. Let AFAR and Airbnb take you away and give you ideas for your next vacation. No matter what mood you're in, let Texture and unlimited access to over 200 magazines help inform, entertain, and inspire you this spring. And right now, you can try Texture for free. To start your Texture free trial, go to texture.com. That's T-E-X-T-U-R-E dot com slash T-I-I. If you choose to continue, podcast listeners will get Texture for just $9.99 a month. That's over 30% off their list price. Go to texture.com slash TII to start your free trial today. Again, that's texture.com slash TII. The magazine looks great on your iPhone and your iPads, and that means you have access to all the magazines anytime, anywhere. And here's what I really like. You can search for a topic across all the magazines. For example, search for podcast, and then I can sort newest, and then I can keep up to date on my day job. Why on earth would you subscribe to a couple of magazines when you could have all of the best ones on your smartphone and your tablet all the time for way less? Sign up for Texture right now and gain insider access to all the content from the world's best publications and no trees were killed to bring you these great publications. It's all just bits, man. Once again, go to texture.com slash TII to get your free 14-day trial. Get real news from real news sources. This is Brent out here in Oklahoma City, and I uh, got to listen to your latest podcast. There was someone looking for an app to be able to block restricted calls, and there is a great app out there that is free, and it is called Umail, and that's Y-O-U, mail, all together one word. And I've been using this now for years, and it is actually one of the best voicemail programs out there. And actually what it does takes the place of your built-in voicemail from your iPhone and from your carrier, but it gives you actually so much more stuff than your regular voicemail does. Now, they do have a business plan that is a paid plan that you get more features, but the free plan is actually pretty great and offers you as, you know, as many features as I need. 
and it will actually block restricted calls. It will actually block them before they even get to your phone. So it will actually catch them and not even ring your phone if you so desire that to do so. Among other things, I mean, I don't have enough time to go over all the features, but it does give you up to like, I think it's 15 or 20 free voicemail transcriptions every month. So you don't actually have to play the voicemail. You can just read the transcription of who called and what they said. It lets you know by a text message or an email whether somebody called and hung up and also emails you when someone leaves a voicemail and you can actually just play the voicemail right through the email or right from the email and you can have different greetings for different people. You can have a smart greeting where it actually will say the person's name that that number is registered to. So it'd say like, hi Rob, Brent's not able to get the phone right now, whatever. So it's just a really great program and it is free. They do have a better uh, business plan that gives you more, you know, business type features if you're running a small business. But the free plan is uh, is just perfect for most people. And so that's what I would check out. And I absolutely love it. It's called Umail, Y-O-U, and then the word mail, M-A-I-L, all one word. So hope that helps. Take care. Brent, thanks for mentioning Umail for that application. It's a service we have mentioned a few times here on the show. If you go back and listen to old episodes, you actually find out I worked for the PR company that helped promote Umail back in the day when they were first launching. All right, into the email bag. Hi, Rob. Sure that you already saw this, that Apple Heart Study is no longer accepting applications, regards Tim. Well, actually, Tim, it looks like they either ended the one study and started a new one, or there was some sort of glitch last weekend. For me, my study seemed to have ended last weekend, and I had to go back into the Apple Heart Study and reapply to get into the new version, or the new one that's running, which I was able to do on Monday. So... Just try again, folks, if you had issues. And for those that were in the study, you may want to check the app on your iPhone to confirm that you still are in the study and contributing data. If it asks you to re-register, um, then you need to register again. And it'll tell you how many, if you, if you don't need to, it'll tell you how many days you've been in. Um, but if it doesn't tell you how many days you've been in and that you need to register, then you need to re-register. Um, would have been nice to, I don't know, you know, been notified. I am sure my heart rate data was a little abnormal once <laughs> when I was realizing that I was no longer active and had to re-register. Again, um, thanks for the notification, Apple, or not. That said, it is, as I mentioned on the last episode, a great study to be part of. If you have an Apple Watch, and if for some reason you get an abnormal heart rate rhythm data, um, not caused by premature cancellation of the, the study, uh, then Apple will contact you. So again, just search for the Apple Heart Rate Study app, download it, register, take part in it. You'll be glad you did. Now, if you are on T-Mobile in the U.S. like me and are a baseball fan like me, then you want to download the free T-Mobile Tuesday app like I did and then take advantage of the free access to Major League Baseball TV you have until April 2nd to get this for free, like I did. It is a $116 value, sweet, and lets you stream all out-of-market games live. Again, this all starts for T-Mobile U.S. customers downloading the free T-Mobile Tuesday app and then finding the MLB free offer. Hurry up. Again, this is just until April 2nd. I've done this the last couple of years, and it is a great offer for baseball fans. Dave in Springfield, Illinois, fighting a cold, listening to episode 459, and your caller asking about blocking restricted calls. I wonder if by restricted calls, I mean like those robot callers. I have an app called RoboKiller. don't remember if you've ever mentioned it before, but I've heard about it on the news and in news articles. If I understand correctly, what it does is any phone number not in your contact list forwards to their system, scans it to see if it's an honest-to-goodness phone call or a robocall. If it's a robocall, the application takes care of it for you. 
and uh, if it's a real call, it forwards it back to your phone. It's a paid-for service, but since I've loaded it onto my phone, I have received no robocalls. So I can do nothing but speak highly of it. Thank you. Dave, thanks for the heads up. I don't think we've mentioned RoboKiller before on the show, so that is a first. So Dave, thank you for that. On Thursday, the 29th of March, Apple officially launched iOS 11.3 Goldmaster to the masses. Per should you update, I still say wait a week or until the next episode of TAI, which should be out in less than a week, which is because past experience dictates we should wait. That said, I went and updated for you guys. And uh, so far for me, I have not noticed any issues. Uh, I have not received any confirmed issues or reports or complaints from any listeners, but it's only been one day, so keep that in mind. What is new with iOS 11.3? Well, first and foremost, there is the battery health beta, or the we are letting you turn off the CPU throttling feature. Per default, with iOS 11.3, the performance management, i.e. CPU throttling, is turned off. It is only turned on once an iOS device experiences an unexpected shutdown. So it is not going to address the issue of unexpected shutdowns until unexpected shutdowns become an issue. If you want to see if it is an issue in iOS 11.3 on an iPhone only, go to Settings app, then go to Battery, then go to Battery Health Beta you will see maximum capacity, which for my iPhone 10 is 100%. Below that is peak performance capability. For most people, this will say your battery is currently supporting normal peak performance. Translated, that is saying your phone's CPU is not being throttled. Let's say maximum capacity is less than 100%. You might then see a message under peak performance that says, the iPhone has experienced an unexpected shutdown. And in part of that message, there is a link to disable the throttling of the CPU. Once you disable it, you cannot turn throttling back on. That is Apple's way of flipping the bird to those that complained. Fine, you want it disabled? It's disabled. And then only another unexpected shutdown will reset it to throttle again. If your iPhone's battery is very degraded, you also get an added message that you should get the battery replaced, which is the message on my son's iPhone 6 Plus, and he, he gets his battery's max capacity right now. It's listed at 76%. In that message, he is getting um, a, a service a link that if you click on it, it takes you to the Apple site so that you can set up an appointment to get it serviced, i.e. get the battery replaced if you know they had any batteries in stock, that is. Something that will hopefully the Apple will have back in stock sometime this summer. iOS 11.3 also includes the new health records feature in the US. Um, basically, it aggregates all of your medical records into one easy for you to access place. Apple released a PR this week titled, Doctors Put Patients in Charge uh, with Apple's Health Records feature. In that PR, they have a list of around 40 health institutions that are supporting health records feature. Link in the show notes for episode 460 to the Apple PR to see if your health institution or institutions are supporting this. When you first log into iOS 11.3, you are brought to a screen that talks about privacy. There's an icon at the top of two people shaking hands. When you see that icon, smaller version of it, that means in the future that uh, some apps are going to be using privacy data. Apple has been touting privacy for a long time. But given Facebook's recent issues, put issues in quotes, the timing of the release could not have worked out better for Apple. As we said on the show many times, with Apple, you are the customer. With Facebook and Google, you are the product. And their customer is advertisers and they sell your data to the customers. That's how Facebook and Google work. Apple, because of this, is in a unique place to be able to help lock down your privacy even more. And not only will it not hurt Apple's business, it will in the long run help it out more. iOS 11.3 is another big step on Apple's privacy crusade. And good for them. 
On the screen talking about data privacy, Apple says in the third person, quote, Apple believes privacy is a fundamental human right. So every product is designed to minimize the collection and use of your data, unquote. Again, good for them and you and me. Not so much for Google and Facebook. If you want to learn more, you can visit apple.com slash privacy. iOS 11.3 also offers up business chat in the U.S. This is a way for businesses and customers to connect directly, to have questions asked and answered in real time, and for customers to keep their identity secure. There is a really, really detailed post in Apple Insider from Daniel Aaron Dilger that goes over Apple's business chat and where Apple is going and allowing businesses to go. Look for the article in the notes for episode 460 titled Business Chat in iOS 11.3 Takes on Social Media in Privacy. iOS 11.3 also offers up four new and emojis. Oh, I'm so excited. Lion, bear, dragon, and skull. Because nothing says I love you more than a talking skull showing off your facial movement. iOS 11.3 intros, intros ARKit 1.5 which is the new version of ARKit that allowed devs to do more with augmented reality apps. Oh, yeah. No, I'm excited. Uh, per accessibility, Apple said the following are included with iOS 11.3. App Store adds accessibility support for bold and large text for display customization. Smart Invert adds support for images on the web and in mail messages improves RTT experience and adds RTT support for T-Mobile, improves app switching on iPad for voiceover and switch control users, addresses an issue where voiceover incorrectly described Bluetooth status and badge icons, Oops. fixes an issue where end call button might not be presented on the iPhone app when using voiceover, fixes an issue where in-app app rating was not accessible with voiceover and resolves an issue when using live listen that could distort audio playback. There are many, many other updates and fixes in iOS 11.3. It was a major update. What are some of your favorites? What new feature or features are you using most in 11.3? Let us know. Of course, any device that supports iOS 11.x supports 11.3. I should also point out that iOS 11.3 does not offer up AirPlay 2 support. That was in there for a couple of early betas, and then it was removed, and it did not return. iOS 11.3 was not the only software to go Goldmaster this week. There were plenty of others. Watch OS 4.3 was also released to the masses. First, you need to update to iPhone uh, iOS 11.3. Then place your Apple Watch on the charger, make sure it has at least a 50% charge and is within range of your iPhone. Then go to the Watch app and settings and look for software update and install from the iPhone. I found it took oh, three times longer for my Apple Watch to update than it did for my iPhone. So don't do this if you have a time constraint. Wait till you have plenty of time, an hour or two, depending on your internet connection. One of the first things you will notice once you update it is nightstand mode when the phone is or the, the watch is in portrait mode previously that was only when in landscape mode this is nice as portrait mode is how i always charge my apple watch and a simple tap on it now shows the time also added into watch os 4.3 or really back in watch os is, is a more accurate way to say it is the ability to control music playing on your iphone from the music app on on your uh, on the Apple Watch. So I was able for my Apple Watch to pick a playlist from my iPhone and then get it to play and, and then get it to actually play on my HomePod and then control the volume of my HomePod all again from my Apple Watch via the music app, which is really nice. I like that. And there was updates to the Siri watch face in uh, watchOS 4.3 one of which is a new activity card that gives you a nice summary of your progress towards closing your activity rings. So you don't have to go all the way into the activity app to see that. So that was 
those are the, the major updates in watchOS 4.3. And Apple did not stop there with updates. They went to 11, or really 11.3 with tbOS, as well as most of you already have your Apple TV set up to automatically update. There is not likely anything you need to do. It should be updated before the Easter Bunny gets here. Sadly, like with iOS 11.3, AirPlay 2 is not part of the Goldmaster. What you do get is, well, not much. Uh, there are some small tweaks, including rating-based content filtering options in device managements. Um, yeah, that's how not much we are talking about when I have to lead with that. There is also some automatic frame rate switching on the 4th Gen Apple TV, a feature added to the Apple TV 4K in the past updates, in a past update. Again, uh, I'm pretty desperate to talk about anything here for TV OS 11.3. And normally, I would be done talking about software updates at this point, except uh, we have our first HomePod software update to talk about. For me, when I set up my HomePod, I must have chosen the option for automatic updates. Maybe that's how it, it's done by default. Um, same as with the Apple TV, because when I went to the HomePod app and looked at my HomePod, it said it was already updated to 11.3 which is the latest version for HomePod, and it shows automatic updates turned on. If you are not sure about how you have it configured, first make sure your HomePod is, of course, powered on and working, or able to work. Uh, next, launch the Home app on your iOS device, then tap the location triangle in the upper left-hand corner to open the Home app configuration. Scroll down to where it says speakers in the heading, and under that, it should say software update. Tap on that. If you are updated, it will say you are at HomePod 11.3 and your software is up to date. If not, update it. I am told it's big file, two gigs, and takes 10 to 15 minutes to install or longer if you have a slower internet connection. Per what the update brings, well, not AirPlay 2. Some are complaining about the update per what it does to the audio quality, saying it degrades the bass impact and loudness and delivers a more prominent mid-range. Ironically, one of the previous messages we had from listeners on their feedback of the HomePod was their dissatisfaction that the bass was too heavy and that the mid-range was not good enough. So for that listener, at least, it seems Apple was listening and did the updates you were looking for. But if you are someone that when you drove down your street as a teenager, that the bass was so heavy in your car that it set off car alarms as you went down that road, uh, you may not be happy with the update. I could not tell a difference, to be honest, and I have no idea when it was updated. So musically, eh, I'm, I'm not really a sound snob. If you are a sound snob, or really just addicted to bass, you may want to turn off the automatic update if it's not too late for you. Again, for iOS 11.3, watchOS 4.3, TVS 11.3, and HomePod 11.3, if you have not updated yet, you may want to wait until episode 461 comes out to see if there are any reports of major issues beyond the aforementioned base to mid-range swap. If you have upgraded, Email me today in iOS at gmail.com or give us a call 206 666 6364. That's 206 Moon Dog. Let us know if you have had any issues or, more importantly, if any issues you had in the past went away when you did the upgrade. Uh, so, if anything you were having problems with with the older versions of iOS went away when you upgraded to iOS 11.3 or any of the other uh, OSs we mentioned, let us know if it solved any problems. And of course, let us know if you have any problems. And by problems, I mean new problems with the iOS or the other OS updates, not problems like your mother-in-law just won't move out of your basement problems. I don't want to hear about that. I want to once again thank Casper for supporting our show and for sending me their incredible new Wave mattress. The Wave is the most innovative mattress from the sleep experts at Casper. It is the first mattress of its kind to relieve pressure at 36 different points, so you can feel relaxed in ways you never thought possible. The new Casper Wave mattress is by far the best and most comfortable mattress in our home. My wife has not stopped talking about it since it was delivered over a month ago. Kind of awkward when your wife keeps inviting friends up to your bedroom to check out your new mattress. Um, thanks, Casper. 
Only the Wave mattress has five layers of superior foam, including a cushioning top layer for maximum comfort. Whether you are a back, stomach, or side sleeper, or some combo thereof like me, the Casper Wave gives you the support and relief you need for a great night's sleep. Wave mattress adjusts to your body's natural curves thanks to its patent-pending contouring system. Simply stated, the Wave mattress puts support in all the right places. Casper offers six sizes from Twin to California King with a great price, and you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. You don't like it for any reason, you get your money back, and they come and pick it up and donate it to charity. I know if you listen to this show, you like the best of the best. That's why we're all Apple fanboys and girls, right? With Casper Wave, you get the best mattress, and you get it risk-free for 100 nights. If you go to casper.com slash TII100 and use promo code TII100, you'll save $100 towards the Wave mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply. All Wave purchases come with in-home white glove delivery and set up for free. They don't just deliver it to your home. They deliver it right to your bedroom and set it up for you. With delivery right now for the U.S. and Canada, and it is free delivery, when said mattress is delivered, it is in a squarish box that you think, no way is there a mattress in there, but yes way. You cut it op- they cut it open for you, and the mattress opens and expands to form. It is really amazing. Just Google Casper Mattress Unboxing. Again, to save 100 on a Wave mattress, go to casper.com slash TII100 and use promo code TII100. Again, casper.com slash TII100, promo code TII100 to save $100. Thanks, Casper, for the great new mattress. And thanks for supporting this show and supporting my back with their incredible new Wave mattress. According to Bloomberg, Apple will soon introduce an update to their website for managing Apple IDs. This will allow Apple users to download a copy of all their data stored by Apple, uh, allowing users to download all their info stored across all of Apple's apps and services. So contacts, photos, music, preferences, calendar info, and more. You will be able to edit your personal info and disable your Apple ID account and even permanently delete an Apple ID. Oh, I can't possibly see anything going wrong with all of this. Apparently, this is being done to be or get Apple in compliance with GDPR, which is in effect already, but the penalty phase kicks in on May May 25th if you're not in compliance. I would assume the site will require two-factor authentication, if not more, Uh, to get authenticated and get access to it, or one would hope. Something about this article just makes me think someday in the future I will be reading an article about someone's account getting fished and someone getting access to a celebrity's contacts or info and deleting info. or I don't know. I, I just get a bad feeling about all this. Report of a potential vulnerability with iOS 11 and the built-in QR reader was announced this past week and this is the QR reader in the camera app, where it could potentially trick you to go to a malicious site. Um, If you scan a QR code, you get a pop-up that asks if you want to go to a specific site. Some researchers were able to create a QR code that had the pop-up say one thing, but take you somewhere else. They said it is possible for the pop-up to say a site that is innocent looking and then take you to a malicious site. Ironically, in their example, they had the pop-up say Facebook.com because, yeah, that is an innocent site. Sure, we'll go with that. But then took the user to a different site altogether. The researchers at InfoSec that came up with this way to do this said they reported the issue to Apple security team on December 23rd, 2017. And as of March 24th, 2018, it had not been fixed. So they decided to go public with it to make sure that iOS 11.3.x has a fix for it. We will follow up on this one in a future episode of TII when a fix is in place. In the meantime, be careful what QR codes you point your iPhone camera at. We have mentioned instances where the Apple Watch has saved lives, but this time we're going to report something that seems straight out of Altered Carbon. Which, by the way, if you have Netflix, I highly recommend you check out that series. In that show, there is a device in each person called a stack where it stores your memories and consciousness. And if you are killed and the stack is in place, they can then move it from your body or what they call now call a sleeve and put it in a new body or sleeve. 
then you, as someone that was murdered, can tell the police what happened and who killed you. Again, Altered Carbon on Netflix. Go binge the 10 episodes once you're done with today's episode. This all brings us back to the Apple Watch and how it was used from a person that was murdered to help catch or likely catch the killer. Myra Nielsen in Australia, and I probably destroyed her name, was murdered in her home in September 2016. Originally, her daughter-in-law reported that Myrna was attacked by a group of men who had forced their way into the property. But police investigators looking at the data from the Apple Watch, specifically the heart rate data, were able to show that story just did not hold water. Seems the data showed that there was a quick burst of heavy heart rate followed by less activity and then no heart rate at all. And the daughter-in-law had told police that her mother-in-law had argued for 20 minutes with the attackers, but there was no way that was true based on the data. The daughter-in-law was then arrested and charged with murder. Oh, she hasn't been convicted yet. The final trial is in, in June. So we'll just say alleged murderer. And we can say, though, that she is the alleged murderer or been named the alleged murderer because of her mother-in-law's Apple Watch and the data thereon. Hey, Rob. This is Jesse from Pennsylvania. Um, I was calling about the caller looking to uh, block restricted numbers. Now, I will say if it's coming from an unknown number, there's really no way to block them. Um, but there are a couple apps out there that do block um, numbers that actually actually use like a social people that will like say this is a fraudulent number and stuff like that. There's a, if you're on AT&T, there's a place, there's an app called Call Protect. It's powered by an app called Haya, which is a, I believe an app you can get no matter what network you're on. And what it'll actually do is it'll even block calls before it even rings your phone. So it actually works on the, the uh, cell side and you actually can go back and look at the app and you'll see, you know, numbers that get blocked. Like people that, you get those calls where they try to say you owe taxes or something like that and you'll get arrested. It blocks those kinds of calls, which I started to get recently and I added this app and now I don't get any of those calls anymore, which is really nice. Now, if someone's calling from an unknown number, it still gets through. So if someone's blocking their caller ID, that still gets through. But there is also an app that has a... a a, a price to pay. So if it, if this uh, is a um, if the unknown number is some kind of uh, call center, I believe it's called like Robot Kill or something like that. It's an app that will answer the phone and actually make the person on the other line think you picked up by messing with them, and then it goes. But I think it's like a dollar ninety nine a month or something like that. It's a uh, you can see it. I think that might be an option too. But those are all I know about because um, I have had some problems from getting calls from numbers I didn't want. So if it's blocking numbers, I highly recommend Haya or Call Protect if you're on at and But they, uh, they both, both those apps work pretty great. Um, thank you very much, Rob. I hope this helps. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, Rob. It's Justin from Pennsylvania. I'm calling back. Um, there's a product that's called Whitestone Dome Glass glass screen protector. They claim that putting this on your screen will cover scratches and even small cracks. It's a liquid installation of a screen protector. It has like an alignment tool and everything like that. And there's like, it's a pretty, you're probably going to want to look on how to do on YouTube if you do it. I've been thinking about getting one. Just a thought, I've heard people say that it actually works on the thing. The $45 screen protector, so it's a little bit of an investment for a screen protector, but it's the claim of it is is the liquid compound fills in cracks and makes them so you can't see them once the screen protector is on. So I imagine it works on a pretty pretty deep scratch as well. You know, just a tip for the guy that had that unfortunate scratching on his phone. Hope it hope it helps him. Thank you very much, Rob. Have a great day. Bye. Justin, thank you for both of those voicemail messages. And back into the email bag we go. Hey, Rob, I'm a longtime listener and fan. Thanks for all you do. I'm sitting here at the West 14th Street Apple Store in Manhattan after buying a replacement pair of AirPods. My warranty expired on February 8th, and it is now February 20th. I was having problems with the right microphone on my AirPod not working. This has been going on for a few weeks, 
but it was hard to diagnose. The reason is that the AirPods randomly choose a mic. On most calls, it, I listen more than I talk, and if someone could not hear me, I would call back and the problem was solved. I do use my AirPods every day, and I run in them and walk in the rain in them. So after a call to Apple support, I met with the genius. He confirmed the, microphones wa the microphone was not working and saw a little bit of green residue in the bottom of the case that was not earwax. He concluded that from the residue, water had gotten into the AirPods and corroded them. I could not argue with that. There is no test that they do like on an iPhone. My solution was to buy a new pair. He told me there, there was the first, this was the first time he'd ever seen an AirPod fail this way. And he works out uh, and sweats all over them too. I have no doubt they see a lot of customers here also. I have an extended warranty that I will use through my Visa card, but if you or your technical fan base have additional info or a way to check that it is actually water damage, please let me know regards David. David, I don't have an answer for you, but I'll throw it out to the audience. If anyone can help David, give us a call, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOON-DOG, or shoot an email to, to, uh, to todayinios at gmail.com. Again, todayinios at gmail.com. Hey, Rob, it's Zach from Ohio State, and I was calling to give you some of my opinions on some Apple devices. I own a lot of iPhones right now, all of them up to the success except for the fit. And I had a iPhone 5S on iOS 10 for a long time, and I updated it to, I believe, the iOS 11 beta 3 version, and that was it. But it turned off one day and never came back on. I checked the Apple several times. A couple times they told me to take it home, reset it, update it. I tried it even at the App Store, never worked. And then they, this last time I took it, they said it was my screen, which it's not because you'll see the reboot loop happening and stuff. I ended up getting an iPhone 6S, and it runs iOS 11 great. When I got it, it was on iOS 10, updated to iOS 11, and I noticed it slowed down a little bit. And then when the beta version for iOS 11.3 came out, I downloaded that, and it's a, I think there's a definitely a difference in performance. I have a 6S, and there was definitely a difference. Now, I did purchase a second iPhone 5S very recently because I wanted to see how it was doing on them now since the other one died and never came back on. It's not doing very well. I, when I got it, it was on iOS 10. Updated to iOS 11, 11.2.5, I think. Sorry about that. And then uh, I put it on the beta version of iOS 11.3, and not much much difference at all. Geekbench was pretty much giving me the same thing, and I didn't see a difference because I heard they're supposed to take the throttling off. And I definitely saw a difference with my iPhone 6S, but not with my 5S. I had some questions about the iPod Touch. I know Apple's been doing those since 2007, and I own all of them but the sixth one. And I was wondering what your opinion would be and if you think that Apple is going to cancel the Apple Touch lineup in the near future like they did with the classics and nanos and uh, the shuffles, which maybe they weren't making as much profit as they used to be. And last thing, I was wondering about the updates for the iPhone 5S. Clearly, it's not doing so well in iOS 11, but I was wondering since the iPhone 3GS went two more iOS is above the 3G, as in the 3G ended on iOS, iPhone OS 4. Uh, the 3GS went through uh, 5 and 6 as well. And then the 4S, which they shouldn't have let update to iOS 9, also went two more higher than the iPhone 4. So if they're going to follow that pattern, technically the iPhone uh, 5S should update to iOS 12. But maybe they'll learn from their 4S and not update it any higher and leave it as is since it's already experiencing quite a lot of issues. That's what I was thinking on that is that's the way they seem to be doing it. Hopefully they've learned and they won't do it anymore. I think that is all. I like your show. I listen to it whenever there's an episode all the time. I like it a lot. Bye, Rob. Zach, thanks for the voicemail message. And per your questions, we'll take them in different pieces here. Uh, per the iPod Touch, I would be surprised if they really did cancel it. It's the only thing they have left that's just purely music. So I think they may upgrade. They're way, way overdue for an upgrade. Uh, that The current iPod Touch 
uses the A8 processor. We're now at the A11 processor for new devices. So, you know, it's it's a little dated and a little long in the tooth. So I would expect to see an update to something using the A10 processor, uh, maybe this year, uh, or cancellation of the product altogether. So it's one of the two. They're either going to update it this year or cancel it. But I think it's going to go. Per the 5S, uh, you know, you were using the 3 and the 3G uh, S there was a two years difference between them in updates. Well, that was because they were also two years apart year wise, uh, processor wise. The 3G, 3G had the same processor as the original iPhone. So by the time the 3GS came around, that processor was two years newer than the, the processor that was in the iPhone 3G. So that's the reason why you went two ahead there on that one. I think that iOS 12 is going to be from the iPhone 6 and up. I, I, I would be surprised if the 5S is supported. It may be uh, in iOS 12, but I would be surprised and I wouldn't hold your breath and Apple already supports their devices longer than anyone else. But I, I would not be shocked. Uh, I would actually be more surprised if the 5S is supported with iOS 12 than if it's not. So I hope that answered your questions. Thanks for calling in. Uh, folks, if you have any questions, give us a call, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG, or shoot an email to todayinios at gmail.com. Is Jon Snow dead? He might just be in low battery mode. Is Jon Snow dead? Dead is dead. Or is it what's dead may never die? No, wait. Death is so terribly final. I give up. Is Jon Snow dead? Well, you know what they say to the Lord of Death. Not today. But why would tomorrow be any better? Or the next day? So, to sum up, I'm not exactly sure. Is Jon Snow dead? You know what they say. What is dead may never die. Though I'm pretty sure most of the people who said that are now dead. Thanks again to Casper for their support of TII. If you go to casper.com slash TII100 and use promo code TII100, you will save $100 off a Wave mattress shipped right to your bedroom. Again, go to casper.com slash TII100 and use promo code TII100. Terms and conditions apply. Before we go today, I want to remind you to send in your feedback to the show, 206-666-6364, that's 206 Moon Dog. or record your feedback and email to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. Feedback can be a question or a comment per something someone said on this episode, or it can be a question or rant about something else, as long as it's iOS-related, an app product, good or bad, doesn't matter. It is welcomed. I am always looking for new artwork to feature uh, that you've created on an iOS device. Just put some TII branding on it and send it in. And of course, we're always looking for more music created on an iOS device to play on the show. This is your show and your feedback is greatly desired. So don't forget to check out our moderated Google Plus community by going to todayinios.com slash community. Quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, email me if you want your app or, or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need the five promo codes or more to give away. Simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com. Please include a 60-second or less audio review of your app or iBook indicating you are the dev or author. Also, when you send in the promo codes, please make sure to let me know when they expire. Thanks again to Texture for sponsoring this episode. Folks, go right now to texture.com slash TII to get your free 14-day trial with access to well over 200 of the best and most popular magazines. Finally, check out the TII app, which is free to you. Search for TII in the iTunes App Store. It is the best way to consume the show and to get push notifications each time a new episode of TII is released. It is fully voiceover friendly, of course. Please go right now and download the TII app or get the update. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, reminding you to bone different. This show is hosted on Libsyn.com and part of the Wizard Media Network. If you are looking for hosting, go to Libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, for hosting for your podcast and for creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can also be found on the free Stitcher radio app. Just search for T-I-I.